Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert were two opinionated film experts, and they often clashed with their reviews. This carried over with their on-screen persona when they fought, and they made jokes about each other when they appeared on talk shows. Some people wondered if the feud was just an act, or if there was serious animosity between them. Join Facts First to learn about the tragic deaths of Siskel and Ebert. Gene Siskel Gene Siskel was born January 26, 1946, in Chicago, the city where he grew up and lived his entire life. He went on to study philosophy and writing at Yale University and studied writing under the famous writer John Hersey. Impressed with young Gene's writing abilities, Hersey put in a recommendation to get Gene a job at the Chicago Tribune. Owing to Gene's love of cinema, the young amateur was given a chance to write film reviews for the newspaper. And whoever gave him his big break must have sensed he was helping launch a star because Siskel and Ebert are as important to film history as any great filmmaker, writer, producer, or actor. Gene Siskel was known for being rather critical of many films, including several considered classics today. Among his negative reviews were films such as Poltergeist, Scarface, Beverly Hills Cop, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and Independence Day. But there were also great mainstream films that he loved, with Saturday Night Fever being one of his favorites. He once owned the original white suit worn by Travolta in the film and sold it later at auction. He loved Dumbo when he was a child and stated that this helped him fall in love with cinema. Some other great films he liked were Nashville, All the President's Men, Annie Hall, Once Upon a Time in America, and Fargo. He often poked fun of Roger Ebert, especially making jokes about his weight. When Gene Siskel was ill, he stated he wanted to get back to work ASAP so that Roger wouldn't get so much airtime. While he often picked on his colleague, he had the utmost respect for him as well. Siskel died February 20th, 1999, at age 53. He continued to work until his death. He had been diagnosed with a brain tumor in 1998, and though he recovered following his surgery, he was never the same. He died due to complications from his brain surgery. Roger Ebert Roger Ebert was born June 18, 1942, in Urbana, Illinois. He grew up in the small town of Champaign and eventually settled in Chicago, where he received a job at the Chicago Sun-Times. Like Gene Siskel, he became one of Chicago's most famous residents, and he lived there until his death. He took an interest in journalism as a teenager and eventually became the co-editor of his school's newspaper. He also worked as a sports writer for the News Gazette in Champaign. He developed a love for cinema early on and was heavily influenced by the work of film critic Pauline Kael. The two eventually became friends, and he wrote an obituary for her when she passed in 2001. Roger began writing film reviews in college, with a critique of La Dolce Vita being among one of his first. He took his study seriously and eventually moved to Chicago to pursue a Ph.D. While there, he found that job at the Chicago Sun-Times, where he began his career as a film critic. He and Gene Siskel had bumped into each other a few times as they both progressed in their careers. Eventually, they were hired to appear in a TV show where they would discuss cinema and critique films. Though they didn't know each other very well, they'd eventually become a well-known double act and a great pair of friends. Ebert truly had an appreciation for cinema and an eye for recognizing talent. One of his earliest film reviews was of Martin Scorsese's film, Who's That Knocking at My Door?, which is one of his earliest films. He predicted Scorsese would become a huge success, and the two eventually became friends. They even hosted an episode of Siskel and Ebert after Gene Siskel's passing. Ebert continued to write and give presentations about film and film criticism after Siskel's passing. Sadly, he succumbed to thyroid cancer and was hospitalized, even losing his voice. Even then, he was watching movies and expressing his opinion. He passed away April 4, 2013, at age 70. His favorite films included Bonnie and Clyde, Z, The Godfather, Apocalypse Now, Platoon, The Social Network, and Argo. Citizen Kane was always stated as his favorite film. Siskel and Ebert's Relationship Owing to the nature of their work, they were both opinionated and would sometimes argue about the films. Sometimes these arguments would get really heated and they'd attack each other, verbally of course. Some of these arguments didn't make it to the final cut. When they appeared on talk shows together, they'd often argue, insult each other, and poke fun of each other, most notably on their several appearances with David Letterman, which began in the 80s and continued into the 90s just before Gene Siskel died. At times, fans weren't sure if this was part of their act or actual animosity. There were even frequent criticisms by Ebert as to why his surname didn't come first. 
due to E coming before S in the alphabet, and he was the one who had won the Pulitzer Prize. From a distance, these battles seemed ugly and sometimes as if their relationship would end. But the record is clear. They were truly great friends who, due to their strong personalities, would sometimes argue like adversaries. But they both had respect for each other and respected their work. When Gene Siskel passed away, Ebert was truly sad, and though the show went on, he didn't enjoy it as much. After a slew of temporary co-hosts from Martin Scorsese to Elvis Mitchell, Richard Roper was cast as the replacement. Ebert and Roper became a successful show, but fans agree Siskel and Ebert was truly the best combination. Siskel and Ebert, the movies they hated. There are so many great films that both Siskel and Ebert appreciated, but it's perhaps more fun to talk about some of the ones they disliked. In an early interview on The Late Late Show with David Letterman, Gene Siskel took a shot at Neil Simon for producing weak comedies of late. This caused an uproar from audiences. In another episode, Siskel expressed his appreciation for Tim Burton's film Batman while Roger Ebert panned it, and he was booed as a result. Whenever there were a few people in audiences who agreed with him, he would refer to this segment of the audience as a pocket of intelligence. Sometimes they criticized movies so much it hurt the egos of those involved in filmmaking. Gene Siskel once stated that actor Robbie Benson ignored him in a hotel when he had given a negative review of the actor's latest film. Ebert had a horrific feud with Vincent Gallo when he gave a scathing review of his film The Brown Bunny. The director lashed out and used vulgar language to describe Roger Ebert upset about the review. They had tremendous influence on what audiences wanted to see or not. As a result, a bad review of a film from Siskel and Ebert, or even just one, could be enough to prevent a film from being seen. But despite their often scathing reviews, they also loved cinema and loved all kinds of films. Many audiences discovered great cinema solely because of Siskel and Ebert. Whether you agreed with them or not, we can't deny they had a great influence on how we view films to this day. For that, we give Siskel and Ebert two thumbs up. Now it's time to hear from you. How much do you listen to film reviewers when deciding what to watch? Let us know in the comments section below.